welcome to my youtube channel today in this demonstration session i am going to demonstrate the spleen you know the spleen is the largest lymphoid organ which is situated in the left hypochondrium and it is a wedge shaped organ most of the cases the shape of the spleen is wedge shaped but there are i um, mean triangular shaped spleens also there okay and i told you this particular the uh, spleen is situated in the left hypochondrium in between the fundus of stomach and the diaphragm fundus of stomach and the diaphragm so now before describing any of the organ the first thing what you have to do is you hold the organ in anatomical position okay so now i am going to hold the structure in anatomical position before that you know i am having the spleen it has got two ends are there there is an anterior end and posterior end and two surfaces there is diaphragmatic surface and visceral surface first identify these three structures or oh, now if we closely examining these two ends you can see this is an anterior end and this is pointed posterior end posterior end is somewhat pointed whereas the anterior end is more or less just like that of a border okay identify this one there is an anterior end and a posterior end and you can see this convex surface that is the diaphragmatic surface and the other is the visceral surface so here we have the diaphragmatic surface and the visceral surface okay and it has got three borders there is superior border inferior border and there is an intermediate border intermediate border okay you can see there is a superior border okay then inferior border and intermediate border intermediate border okay now how to hold in anatomical position i told you it has got anterior end and posterior end is also known as the lateral end and medial end because it is somewhat placed like this in our body this posterior end is just lateral to the vertebral column here we have the vertebral column and this is the anterior end and this anterior end lies in the mid axillary plane if you have an axilla and if you make a draw a line uh, in the middle of the axilla there is a mid axillary line this anterior end of the spleen lies or at the mid axillary line mid axillary line okay now so this is how you hold the structure in anatomical position hold the structure in anatomical position okay now this is how it is okay now you know this is an anterior end of the organ and this is a posterior end and here we have the superior border how to identify the superior border you can see that superior end is notched you can see some notches splenic notches are there splenic notches so what is the uh, i mean anatomical base of splenic notches so splenic notches which is present on the superior border of the spleen that uh, indicates the lobulated origin of the spleen okay spleen develops as islands of tissues okay so these spleniculi we call them spleniculi these spleniculi okay that or this lobulated structure later fuses to form the spleen okay so these uh, Uh, lobules are or you can see this is serrations okay so this is present on the superior border of the spleen superior border of the spleen okay now if you see this anterior end or the lateral end of the spleen i told you it is just like a border okay and it has two angles are there okay we call it as this is the anterobasal angle and this is a posterobasal angle anterobasal angle and posterobasal anterobasal angle and posterobasal angle so this is somewhat like this the organ is situated okay the anterior end or the lateral end is directed downwards forwards and laterally downwards forwards and laterally whereas the posterior end or the medial is directed upwards medially and backwards upwards medially and backwards so here at the anterior end presents two angles there is anterobasal angle and posterobasal angle this is known as the anterobasal angle and posterobasal angle anterobasal angle of the spleen is known as a clinical angle of the spleen clinical angle of the spleen why it is called clinical angle you know normally the spleen is non palpable we cannot palpate this organ okay once there is enlargement of spleen that is known as the splenomegaly splenomegaly okay during splenomegaly this part of the spleen is palpable that is why this angle anterobasal angle is known as the clinical angle of the spleen clinical angle of the spleen so here we have an anterobasal angle here is a posterobasal angle okay now i told you about the superior border the superior border it has got some serrations are there 
okay i told you the importance of these serrations okay notches splenic notch splenic notch this superior border separates the whole of the visceral surface from the diaphragmatic surface you can see the convex diaphragmatic surface convex diaphragmatic surface superior border separates the visceral surface from the convex diaphragmatic surface this again inferior border we have below we have the inferior border this inferior border again separates divides the diaphragmatic surface from the visceral surface from the then there is an intermediate border intermediate border so now let us see the visceral relations of the stomach visceral relations okay then there is a large impressions here you can see that between the superior border and the intermediate border superior border and intermediate border so this is known as the gastric impression this deeper impression is the gastric fundus of stomach is situated related to this area fundus of stomach is related to this area okay where you can see the fundus of stomach fundus of stomach or the gastric impression is present on the visceral surface of the liver in between the superior border and the intermediate border superior border and intermediate border okay and between the intermediate border and the inferior border intermediate border and the inferior border this impression is for the left kidney left renal impression left renal impression okay where you can see the renal impression renal impression on the spleen is situated below and behind the gastric impression below and behind the gastric impression gastric impression okay that is the renal impression okay again you can see this anteriorly before that you can see the splenic vessels are there okay so this area where the splenic vessels enters is known as the hilum of the spleen hilum of the spleen okay so we have the hilum of the spleen is situated over here just in front of the hilum in front of the hilum there is a triangular area you can see this triangular area is related to the splenic flexure of colon splenic flexure of colon okay there is a flexure of colon on the left side left flexure or the splenic flexure of colon is situated over here okay and just behind that just behind that there is an area where the tail of the pancreas is situated so here this is the area where the tail of the pancreas is situated so these are the some of the visceral relations okay so we have here the gastric impression here we have the renal impression here come the colic impression and in front of the hilum that is the impression of the tail of pancreas tail of pancreas now the diaphragmatic surface you know this convex area is a diaphragmatic surface so diaphragmatic surface you know it is related to diaphragm okay and this diaphragmatic surface is related to three ribs okay 9 10 11 ribs some certain it is mentioned 9 10 11 and some other books it is given 10 11 12 anyway three ribs are related okay in most of the books it is rated 9 10 and 11 ribs 9 10 and 11 ribs in some books it is mentioned 10 11 and 12 okay 10 11 and 12 ribs and here I told you we have the splenic artery, splenic vessels are there, okay. The splenic uh, artery is a branch of celiac trunk, it is the largest branch of the celiac trunk. What is another peculiar to the splenic artery? It is tortuous, okay. It is tortuous. Why it is tortuous? Because the splenic artery is present behind the stomach and the colon, okay, behind the colon. So during the extension of the, this particular stomach, expansion of the stomach, okay so there should not be any damage to the splenic artery okay if the stomach expands okay so the, uh, the splenic artery should not uh, rupture okay that is why the splenic artery is tortuous splenic artery is tortuous okay so here we have the splenic artery and the venous drainage by the splenic vein splenic vein and you know the splenectomy surgical enlargement of the spleen is known as sorry splenectomy is a surgical removal of the spleen Okay, that is a splenectomy and the enlargement of the spleen is known as a splenomegaly, splenomegaly. So, there is a question normally asked, splenomegaly is always towards the right iliac fossa. If the spleen enlarges, okay, so that is called splenomegaly. Splenomegaly happens towards the right iliac fossa. What is the reason for the splenomegaly, right iliac, why splenomegaly happens towards the right iliac fossa? The reason is, the spleen is related to some ligaments okay so below there is a ligament called gastro splenic ligament sorry what are the peritoneal relations of spleen peritoneal relations so, you know at the hilum you know the splenic vessels are going okay from the hilum there arises two ligaments one is going anteriorly this is the area for the gastric impression okay towards the stomach to the stomach there is a gastro splenic ligament and posteriorly we have the kidney over here so there is a ligament called gastro 
sorry, leno renal ligament, leno renal ligament, okay, gastrosplenic ligament and leno renal ligament. Important thing is within the gastrosplenic ligament, what are the structures related? We have the short gastric vessels are there, short gastric vessels are there, and at the leno renal ligament, what are the contents of leno ligament? Tail of the pancreas, tail of the pancreas, and the splenic vessels tail of the pancreas, splenic vessels and some lymph nodes. So, these three structures present in the lino-renal ligament, lino-renal ligament, okay. Then, the surgical removal of the spleen is known as the splenectomy, splenectomy, okay. During surgical removal or the splenectomy, one thing you should remember, so when we remove these, excise the ligaments, okay, care sh should be taken to avoid injury to these, these structures. For example, in the gastros splenic ligament, we have the short gastric vessels, it has to be ligated or at the leno renal ligament, we have the tail of the pancreas and the splenic vessels are there, okay. So, during the splenectomy, so the leno renal ligament should be incised carefully to avoid injury to the tail of the pancreas. You know the important tail of the pancreas, tail of the pancreas has got large number of islets of Langerhans. To, uh, I mean, uh, avoid damage to the structure, it, this uh, care should be taken not to damage this tail of the pancreas, okay.